What's going on guys? So as we know, concert photography is very tough because the lights are never what we want them to be. It seems like we're always battling against the lights and trying to turn the lights into the cool photo that we really want. So today I'm gonna to be taking you guys through the six ways that we can change the color of photo in Lightroom. Let's get right into it. All right, so before we get into the color grading, I wanna talk about a couple different things. So first I had a company reach out and send me this mic. I'm trying it out, we're gonna see how it works. Next video will be a full review of how it works and if it's a good budget mic for you guys to get. These photo tips are gonna work the best with raw photos. If you're shooting in JPEG, if you shot this on your phone, it's gonna be very tough for you guys to have the same results. If you're shooting in raw, these tips are gonna be very, very helpful for you. And last, when you're editing, make sure that the room you're in has good light. Right now it doesn't because my lights are set up for filming a YouTube video. But when you're editing for real, the lights around you in the room are really gonna affect how things look on your computer because everything looks different in the context that it's in. So make sure that when you're editing that the light is very neutral, very balanced, and you're ready to really see what the photo looks like in genuine light. I've gone ahead and I've made a virtual copy of the photo. So this is what the raw photo looked like. As you can see, it is pretty different from how my final edit looks like. So this is Caleb Shomo from Beartooth. I shot this at iMatterFest about a month ago. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I would do is crop this photo down. I don't want it to be that size. So eight by 10 generally works. Let's put it right there. First thing I would do when I'm starting to look at the colors is I'd scroll all the way down and go to camera calibration. So this is the first place I'm gonna look to color photos when I get a photo that looks like this, where it works, but not really. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. All right, so as I work on this, it's important to note that I'm not looking for anything in particular. I'm just trying to make the colors look how I want. There's not a reason this is 31. There's not a reason this is 28. It's just what looks cool to me and it's what we're rolling with. It sounds like my cat really wants to come hang out. So we're gonna see if the mic picks him up. And also if you can, please excuse him. He just wants to be friends right now, but we can't, we're busy. So anyway, the next way we would change color is with white balance. So with the white balance here, it looks a little bit pink in his skin. So maybe put in a touch more green. There we go, somewhere like that. And then yellow, blue. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that one right where it was. So, great. Two ways of color correcting down. All right, the third way that I go to color correct is probably the most powerful way, and it's one that you really should be pretty careful with if you don't quite understand how it works. So we're gonna go into here, into the tone curves, and this, this first one doesn't really do color. It's just gonna work with like the contrast of the photo. So we can get that into a little, quick version of what we might want. Something, something around there looks cool to me. So we're gonna go with that, leave it, not super important for this video. But the other ones here are the color ones. So we have red, we have green, we have blue. This shows the color on the luminance spectrum, I believe. So this is like the darkest of all the reds and this is the brightest of all the reds. So if we move this bottom one, if I could click it successfully, we're changing just the red in the shadows. So if we cut all the reds in the shadows, we end up with a lot of blue and green in the shadow. If we bump all the red, you see all the red. Generally, I like to leave the shadows where they are and work with the rest of the curve. So the more points you put in, the more specific and the more you're able to tailor this to how you want it. I like to start with just four points. Uh, so one at the end, one at the beginning, and these two in the middle, just to get a, like a, a rough sense of what I want. And then I'll go back later and really finely tune these, maybe you know scoop this up a little bit or cut that out. Those both look gross right now, so we're not gonna do it, but you can go back later. Let's go into the green, figure it out. So we're gonna put a little extra blue in this photo. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm trying to recreate the one how I first did it. We're following a similar process, so I'll probably get a pretty similar outcome. All right, once you're happy with the curves, the next thing I would go and do is work on the exposure information. This isn't necessarily related to color, but it can affect it. So I'm gonna go through it quickly, and then we'll talk about some parts towards the end. All right, so the dehaze slider is one that we can definitely talk about in terms of color. I couldn't tell you exactly how it works, but when we turn it up, we see much more intense colors. We turn it all the way down, we see very washed out colors. This is how people have been creating like a dreamish look. Uh, I guess somewhere around there, if we had edited the photo differently, you would get kind of a dreamy look because the edges are very soft. There's a lot of bright whites. Up here is all very bright. I don't love that for this photo, but you can go that way. I like to turn it up just a hair and just bring back a little bit more detail. That works right there. 
vibrance, saturation. Uh, you can do them later, you can do them now. Uh, again, I like to turn the vibrance up a little, saturation, wherever. We're gonna turn it down just a little bit here because I want to lose a little bit of the red. So the third way to color correct photos is called the HSL sliders. And the HSL sliders are right here. It's the hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, so just for example, if we use our blues, quick tip, you can click on this little thing up here. I don't know what it is, this little circle, and it allows you to just go over the photo and use it. So if you wanted to change the hue and the blue, we can just do that and you click and drag up and down. That is way too extreme for what we want to do right now, but let's see if we can do, there we go, something a little bit more subtle. Maybe work a little bit with the skin tones. Perfect, somewhere in there looks good to me. I would like to desaturate the skin a little bit so we can pull that down just a hair and then figure out what color it actually is in his skin. Looks like it's a little bit of red. Pull that down a little bit, pull some of the orange out, pull out some of the yellow. And the last, we'll go with the luminance, bump up these blues. I think, yeah, bump up a little bit, bump up some of the skin. Great, we're in the right ballpark. So the second to last way to correct colors is with split toning. Split toning is gonna add color in where the other ones we've all done are manipulating the colors that the camera saved from the image. The split toning is really just gonna add colors on top. So if we were to click a super dark blue, we can see it just adds this blue into the highlights, red, whatever color we wanted it to add. I like to just click around and see what looks cool. I don't tend to have a plan with these, and I think that's pretty normal, pretty common for a lot of photographers. If you have a clear vision, you know you need blues in the highlights, go for it. But for the most part, I'm gonna click around and see what looks cool. So I like, I like this just like a little bit of blue in these highlights. If we go too much, it just looks crazy to me. Um, but without any of the blue at all, we can see it's a little bit flat. So adding just a touch of the blue into the highlights really brings it all together. With the shadows, we can do a similar thing. Let's put a little, probably a little bit of yellow in, kind of orange. Great. Somewhere right in there looks pretty cool to me. So then we can go ahead and balance these out. Cool, but a little bit more. The last way to color correct is the most technical way and it's the way I would do last, but it definitely can help add in some more detail. So what we can do is now we can go ahead and use this brush up here and we can paint on colors to certain parts that we want. So his skin, I think probably looks, could look a little bit better here. So if we just paint onto it, right now I'm painting with a pretty dark exposure. So I like to have it pretty radical just so I can see easily what's being painted. And then we can go ahead and scroll out, take that brush. And now we definitely don't want it to be that dark. Let's figure out what we want. So the skin could be a little brighter and it could be a little bit desaturated. So we'll pull out some of the saturation. Got to get the color to be just right. Uh, we'll darken, lower the clarity just a little bit, get rid of a little bit of grain on there. And then that's pretty cool. We have to put the same thing on his other hand. Great. One last little trick I like to put on my photos is just a little gradient. Uh, so if you put Shift M on your keyboard, it opens up the circle. It's also this window up here. Uh, you can just turn down the exposure a little bit. Again, you can see how it works. Uh, but we turn down the exposure, we can turn up the feather a little bit, and then just center it around just to get a little bit of darkness on the edges and create it. So these are the six ways we can color grade in Lightroom. This is our after and our before looked a little bit like this. Just kidding, it looked like that. Um, so this is the edit when I put all my time into it. This is how it came out today. They are definitely a little bit different, but I guess that's the difference between editing for YouTube and actually doing my job in editing. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Hopefully you were able to learn something. Hopefully we learned how to color grade in Lightroom. Let me know if you guys have any of the videos you'd like to see. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. This guy finally gets to come play. Let's watch, watch the excitement. Boom! That's how it be.